This presentation of Beyond the Border is made possible by a grant from the David M. Kennedy Center for International Studies at Brigham Young University. Expand your world. The beautiful and historic Caucasus Mountains are home to three major conflicts in the former Soviet Union, Nagorno-Karabakh, Abkhazia, and Chechnya, and multiple minor struggles. Intertwined in this convoluted political and geographic landscape is a significant portion of the world's known oil reserves. The Caspian Sea Basin boasts great fields of crude and natural gas, but there is a problem. The Caspian is not really connected to world markets right now. There are pipelines originating from the Caspian. Dilapidated and constantly under sabotage, they are unusable. The most ambitious international pipeline project will skirt four regional wars and numerous ethnic enclaves where war can break out at any moment. Many pipelines are effectively the geopolitical fault lines of the early part of this century. This presentation of Beyond the Border is made possible by a grant from the David M. Kennedy Center for International Studies at Brigham Young University. Expand your world. Today, Azerbaijan is one of the world's poorest countries, but that will change with the opening of a pipeline, which will take Azeri oil from the Caspian Sea to the west. The Caspian is one of the few what they call oil provinces, which is not really connected to world markets right now. Few know more about the Caspian Sea region than Robert Corsi, an independent consultant for the most ambitious pipeline project in the region. There's quite a controversy over how much oil is actually in the Caspian, but certainly it will make a big difference over the next five to ten years as an alternative source of supply, um, particularly to Europe, but also further afield, even to the U.S. and to Asia. An oil and energy expert, Robert has traversed the Caspian and other oil provinces for most of his professional life. In 2006, 2007, the Baku Tbilisi Chehan pipeline will be shipping about one million barrels of oil per day. Now, world consumption is about almost 80 million barrels of oil, so it doesn't sound that much. But BTC alone will perhaps be as much as 25% of incremental global demand in 2006, 2007, 2008. And the importance, the ultimate political importance, is that it, it does diversify sources of supply for oil. The BTC pipeline will take oil from Azerbaijan's Caspian oil fields to the Turkish port city of Jehan via Georgia. When the pipeline is finished and the oil begins to flow, Azerbaijan is poised to be the richest country in the region. The actual amounts that they will receive eventually will depend, on, of course, on world oil prices. Um, but you're talking in the range of, over a period of 15, 20 years, up to sort of $30 billion, $40 billion. If oil prices stay where they are now, it'll be a lot higher than that. In 1991, the year the Soviet Union collapsed, few would have guessed that Azerbaijan would have any oil money to talk about. Even though the Azeri portion of the Caspian Sea had significant quantities of oil, there didn't seem to be any way this oil could be sent to customers that could afford to pay for it.
The problem wasn't that Azerbaijan was new to the oil game and so had to start from scratch. On the contrary, oil under Azeri lands had been discovered as far back as the 700s, and commercial exploitation, the most significant of which was carried out by Alfred Nobel and his brothers, had begun in the 1870s. The problem was that during the Soviet era, as the Soviet Union consolidated its power over the Caspian Sea, decisions about how to extract and distribute Azeri oil were made in Moscow for the good of the Soviet Union, not Azerbaijan, despite Soviet propaganda films. The oil men of Baku, the most important oil producing area in the Soviet Union, are exploiting on a never growing scale the rich oil deposits on the bottom of the Caspian Sea. This drilling tower is more than four miles away from the shore. One of the best workers of the Baku oil fields, Rustamov, is in charge of the drilling of a well one and a half miles deep. It's one of the deepest oil wells here and promises a very rich yield of the black gold of the Caspian. Azerbaijan always suffered. The historical context is that during the Soviet times, uh, because they, they made a choice that, that strategically they would develop Western Siberian oil fields because they were far more protected than perhaps the Caspian. Um, so Caspian developments were, were sort of put on the, the back burner. Azerbaijan's whole infrastructure had been set up to get the oil out of Azerbaijan and into the other Soviet republics. But when the Soviet Union fell in 1991, None of the former republics could afford to pay market prices for the oil. So Azerbaijan was stuck shipping it to countries that couldn't pay for it. The drill has been started on its long journey downward. Another problem was that during the Soviet era, Oil had been extracted in a highly inefficient way, and little attempt had been made to modernize the equipment used. As a result, Azerbaijan was left with out-of-date, dilapidated machinery, ill-suited for a modern oil industry. And one of the problems of developing Azerbaijan's reserves, and the reserves of Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan as well, has been that there's just simply no infrastructure. The infrastructure that was there was very dilapidated and very old. So virtually everything to produce the, the oil coming out of the Caspian, particularly in the Azeri sector, has to be brought in. For example, the platforms, some of them are constructed in Singapore, and they're, they're shipped all the way around the world and then come down via the uh, Volga Don canal system into the Caspian. So physically, logistically, it's a very difficult place to operate. Too poor to build modern wells in the Caspian or a pipeline to transport the oil to paying customers in Asia or Europe, Azerbaijan had a serious problem. One that could only be resolved by funding from abroad. There was no shortage of suitors. Companies from the United States, the European Union, Russia, and Turkey all vied for a stake in the vast Azeri oil reserve. <laughs> 